Hello everyone and welcome to the late night Strictly Quantum show, maybe it's early morning for someone. I'm joined here by Joe, lead R&D designer. This is the fourth Strictly Quantum, third in, a, in, in, in the entire e existence of Strictly Quantum. Yep, yep, third in here for sure. Yeah, uh, if some of you have read the press release, you, you have read that we will have some interesting stuff, but what you read in the press release is not all of it, so we will have many other things here. I have a list so, so, so that I don't forget what to mention. But be before we dig into the uh, juices, this show has been sponsored by Matrix 7. And that was the message from our sponsor. But before we continue, we are already getting message that messages that something is wrong with the sound. So we are waiting for the sound guy to check it. And once everything is good, please confirm that everything is good. Music is loud, voice is barely heard. Video guy, sup with that. It's fixed. Okay, is it, nice. Is it good? Thumbs up. Like and share, subscribe. Is it good? <laughs> Someone confirm? Mm. Okay, okay. Okay. The boss says it's good. So uh, let's start the show. We will start off with some magnitude spare parts. The magnitude spare parts have been in the shop for a week now, something like that. Yep, yep. But we will talk about them here. So if someone missed the uh, newsletter or press release, then we will mention them here. So every piece of the magnitude CPU block will now be available in the shop. Not every single part, but every key part as a component will be available in the shop, right? Yeah, so we're not breaking it down to literally every single item, but the, the useful packages. So the tops come on their own because the the standard square magnitude top can fit every socket so whether you have uh, an older product like a lga 1200 or uh, 2066 the square top still fits so the top is for everyone just like the accents were uh, we don't just have the original three tops but we have two new ones we now have gold and satin titanium and the same goes for the accents we've now added gold, satin, titanium, and walnut. So tops and the accents, they're on their own. The top just comes with the badge. Uh, the interesting sets are the frames because they include all of the specific parts for that socket. So with the frame, you get the insert, the O-rings which go inside, the screws to assemble it, uh, whatever applies in terms of mounting for that socket. So the back plate, uh, the thermal paste, all of the the mounting screws, uh, standoffs, washers, springs, etc. And then the last part is the cold plate. And we didn't put the cold plate with the frame so that you can choose exactly what you want for your CPU. So we have three different radius. Uh, one is completely flat, one is two meters radius, and that's suited to the uh, Intel chips. So small Intel chips like 1150, 1155, all those guys and 1700 to an extent. Uh, if you're running an ILM replacement with 1700, like the Thermal Grizzly one, then it's probably best to go for the lesser curved one, the three meter, and the three meter also fits perfectly with the AMD CPUs with AM4. There, so there's a small marking both on the inside and on the outside of the cold plate, which is a small smiley and a flat smiley on the flat one so <laughs> so so you know which uh, call plate are you getting and using um with the tops gold and satin titanium tops we also have 
two accent frames which match them. I have used the gold one here already. Uh, we will uh, we will have them or no we we already have them in the shop. And with these two frames that that brings us to uh, how many different uh, accent ring. So here we have six nine nine accent ring frame options on the whole market that you can customize your uh, magnitude block uh acetal plexi nickel the these are all standard ones and uh, i guess we have covered the uh, magnitudes quite quickly yep so uh with the, with those four sets with those four different products when you take a top an accent a frame and a cold plate that's everything you need to build an entire block on your own this is something we wanted to do way back when we started magnitude i'm really happy that it's, it's finally made it to the shop there are just thousands of, of really interesting combinations that you couldn't have before just like really simple like plexi with the black frame uh, ranging through now with with satin combines really nice really vibrant colors uh, the the rgb kit still fits all of the tops so you can run the the white acetal rgb kit on satin on gold on on whatever i like this one <laughs> Moving on, uh, now we're done with the uh, CPU blocks, we will stay s with CPU blocks. If you read the press release, uh, we mentioned a uh, pump reservoir CPU block combo, which is coming soon TM. Uh, let me grab it and put it on camera. L lots of people sad about no, no orange and no white in magnitude. Um, White is a challenging finish, which we are working to tackle. I think you can expect to see it in the portfolio even more than just the radiators. We do have radiators now, so that's one yeah. thing. Uh, and that's something we'll continue with as many products as we can. Uh, it, but it's, it's also difficult to find platings that we can apply to every product and have them work everywhere and still yep. match. Orange is one of them and also orange is not so popular for for some reason and this is also what we are struggling with internally that orange is the EK color and we should have it but uh, sadly it's not that popular um, among other customers and then it uh, makes us in a difficult situation where you you have minimum order quantities and you, you have to order tons and then and then it ends up unsold so that's why we only have the seven standard colors but we do have the orange in the fan side damper so maybe one day uh, we will try to to convince some people back to the pump thingy toppy uh, reservoir combo so this is a pump reservoir cpu block combo it's built on the original in the original velocity 2 cpu block it has the exact cold plate as the uh, standard CPU block it has the same mounting and it has the same footprint but it's a bit taller we had a nice picture in the press release about the height but while Joe talks about the uh, thing itself I'm gonna try to assemble it here because we have the three main key parts of this product so we have the plexi the, the top and the acetal side cover yep so this is this is practically the biggest part of an AIO if, if you would in uh, and in building tiny systems and in building systems where it's difficult to place a reservoir I know uh, everyone's gonna love this there have been others on the market but I think this is the first to comprehensively uh, fill in the socket and offer tube tube routing that's genuinely useful in such spaces uh, we have a pair of ports on the side, directly over the RAM. Uh, they will just clear a uh, typical size RAM like uh, Trident Z's and two ports on the top. And in that way, we can keep the installation height practically the same as a standard CPU block. Those ports on the side are just the same height as if you put 90s onto, uh, onto a standard Velocity 2. Yeah. So um, with that little bit of 
of extra volume there. We packed in a real DDC 4.2 in a normal volute, so you can expect it to behave just like any other DDC pump res. The velocity too, again, unmodified in, in the cooling engine, so uh, exactly the same thermals as you'd expect. And this will be coming to a couple of sockets very soon. Yep. Uh, AM4. So, yeah, the one, the one you see here is developed for AM4, and it will be AM5. taken forwards to AM5, and we also have a square one developed for LGA1700. This is maybe the most in interesting part that you ha we have similar products on the market, but this one actually has a brass top, which which is the second half of the uh, uh, reservoir. It also has the fill port on it, and it also acts as a heat sink for the DDC pump itself. Uh, the uh, plexi part is made in such a way that the coolant from the pump is di directly pushed onto the uh, yep, straight, center straight of the Straight out yeah. of the pump and yeah. into the, the inlet cavity of the it Velocity. will be this one here. This is the in, and these, these two are the out. Yeah, and then there's a, a long passage through the center that runs from the reservoir down into the middle of the pump. This one. Um, it will be available only in one material finish, and that's the one that you're seeing here. So that the plexi bottom, uh, a acetal part which houses the ports. It will also house the LED which will shine into the plexi part and the uh, brass top, which is acting as a cooler for the uh, DDC pump. It's a 4.2 DDC pump with a SATA plug and all black cables. Anything else we have to mention about this one here? Um, no, no, I, I would just clarify that the, the pump has uh, a thermal pad on the PCB side, so on the top side of the pump, and DDCs are actually air-cooled. Uh, in, a, in a standard configuration. They're not cooled by the liquid in the loop like a D5. Yep. Uh, so this top piece, this top brass piece, thermally contacts the board, takes the heat from the pump, and actually is being that cooled, is cooled in, by turn, the coolant. in turn cooled by the coolant in the reservoir. So you effectively have active cooling for the DDC, DDC. which is quite unique. And you know that means you don't have to worry about giving it any airflow at all. It can just Yep. Be, be in the loop, be in a, in a compact case, uh, and that there's no danger with the pump. As we said that this will probably be the favorite of small form factor people, but we see that it might end up in regular ATX cases like the NZXT, NZXT uh, 500 or 510, what was it, is it? Is it yeah, is the, it the, H, the H510, yeah. I think. It's a really nice case, but it doesn't have a lot of space for liquid cooling. If you have a radiator in there, immediately you are struggling with space for a uh, combo unit. And like similar smaller cases, smaller mid-sized ATX cases where you are struggling to, to, to fit a combo, this will take care of the problem so that you can have a uh, thicker radiator inside the case but, but still, still have everything packed inside the... Uh, CPU block so that you don't have any additional parts. Yeah, a few, a few more questions coming about this and I think it's it's really interesting so we should go through them all. Uh, firstly, about vibration. Uh, the block itself is hugely heavy and, and that really helps to uh, deaden like any... 1.2 kilos. Yeah, 1.2 kilos. Just a block with no coolant. So it, it really does deaden any vibration uh, in itself. Uh, sadly, it can't be isolated, but yeah. it, again, this is attached to the motherboard, which is quite a soft assembly compared with a case that might have uh, thin sheet metal panels that could vibrate. So, I mean, also, no one runs his D DDC at 100% because that alone is annoying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I believe that no yeah, one and will. Yeah, and again, you, you have the cooling there for the pump. If you want to run it at super low speeds, you can yep. run DDCs down to. 1500 RPM, yeah. absolutely fine. Uh, another question is surrounding what motherboards will this fit? It, actually, every single board. It yep. doesn't overhang the spec for AM5. Uh, AM5. It doesn't overhang Intel spec. So like the, the Z690i Strix, as you mentioned, uh, it will fit right in exactly, just like the Velocity does, you know, where it just manages to squeeze in the, the Intel spec. So 
same story here. It's exactly the same external size, just taller. Uh, and it should fit in, in lots of cases because it's a similar height to the most common low profile air coolers that the, the SFF cases tend to cater for. Uh, so the, the sideways mounted air coolers, it's the same height as that, 17 millimeters yeah. from the board. Um, yeah. Any other questions? No one asked about the price. Good. Move forward. <laughs> uh, I think the price will be 250 euros, something like that. But uh, taking into account that you have a genuine Xylem D DDC pump in there, which is cooled and there's a lot of mass here. So it's not just a piece of plastic. I hope that the price is fair. Coming August, September, maybe something like, like that. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. There will be an Intel version. It will be the same footprint as the regular Intel block. So you have no fear about any com com compatibility issues. While we're still on CPU blocks, uh, another great question. Will there be a magnitude 2 in the near future? Uh, definitely not imminently. Uh, one day we will certainly make a successor and we hope to incorporate ideal matrix seven spacing and port direction into the magnitude platform as well. But uh, the main thing to consider is the development time for magnitude to be sure that it is the, the best performer across every socket, across every platform uh, is a huge investment and it's definitely not gonna start before the, the new platforms are on the market. And from then, as you saw with the first gen, we, we took about one year to, to completion with the magnitude. So uh, in upcoming Strictly Quantums, I think we can expect announcements and, and then products. Very gradual products, not, but Come, not, coming not DMs. next month. <laughs> uh, you mentioned Matrix 7 and that brings us to distro plates. If there are no other questions uh, tied to the uh, pump combo unit. The only other question was reservoir. What about reservoir? It does actually yes, have, reservoir. does have a volume uh, inside. So it's milled both down into the plexi and These two. up into the brass. So while it's, Which it's only a little deep? cube, uh, it is quite deep. So more than enough to keep, keep the air out yeah. of the loop, but not necessarily uh, the kind of volume that you need to fill a big loop but you can always attach a tube, attach yeah. a separate reservoir. Um, uh, we'll we'll clear that up with a video, I think. Yeah, we will make sure that, that, that we will have guides of, uh, of how to use it in a simple way. You can have a tube attached to it and you can have a drain point port at the lowest part of the, of the build so that, that if you filled it and you have coolant left in the tube, you just open your drain valve so that all of, all of the coolant go, goes away and you're, you're, you're at the safe fill level of your loop. So there are some tricks to how to uh, fill a loop like this. Uh, Matrix 7? Yeah, let's get on to it. Matrix 7. Uh, there's one distro behind us. It's the Evo. It's been launched today. It's in the shop. You can order it. Who? What? Varun says, can we swap haircuts? <laughs> For Photoshop challenge. I, uh, he had a haircut just for the show, and yeah. I didn't have a haircut just for the show. Someone please do a Photoshop <laughs> challenge. <laughs> we will stay still for three seconds so that you grab a screenshot and surprise us. Okay. Surprise us. Uh, <laughs> Matrix 7 stuff, distro in the back. It's for the Evo. We don't have it on the table because it's in the build that's going for a special photo shoot. I mean, it already wasn't a special fo photo shoot. It's in the shop. You can check it out. Uh, interesting thing about the Evo distro is that the pump is not at a lower point of the uh, distro, but it's on the middle because you can flip the Evo around. Uh, yep. So uh, another question we had earlier is what cases will we be making reflection to distro plates for? And I think this is the time to answer that. So you can see here on the desk, we have the reflection two for the mini, uh, the reflection two for the PCO 11 D XL in the back we have for the PCO 11 D Evo. So 
that that the first three exiles already on the site evo went up today mini probably goes one week or something ne like that, next yeah. week uh and directly following that will be this one which is for specifically for the fractal define 7 xl and the meshify 2 xl so uh in the last generation we developed something for the r6 which happened to fit the 7 when it released shortly afterwards uh, but this was from the ground up for the xl uh, and in that way it offers compatibility with a p480 at the top and Big an boy. x360 in the front and all of your fan filters can stay in place so i think the the fractal guys will be super yep. happy with this and we're super happy to accommodate fractal much better than we did before yep. uh, next on the list after that is a corsair case the 5000d platform the, the the larger of the atx uh corsairs i can't remember exactly which combination but i think it's 5000d 5000x and maybe the 4000s don't don't quote me 100 percent, but that will be the next and then we're also looking into the height well, what do you think about the height? Should we really do it? It's a quite a popular case. I like the looks of it. We just got one in the office directly from height. Thanks for helping us out with the sample. Uh, the build quality is very good, if you ask me. It's very differently, differently formed panels. Yeah. It's, it's not what you'd expect. It's not just simple flat pieces, even internally. It's quite yeah. nicely pieced together. We're looking into doing a special kind of distribution plate for that one, so not in the front, but more on that later. Uh, let us know if you think that's a good idea, and also if you have other case requests for distro, let us know. And before we move forward, we will just talk a little bit more about these here. So the Mini is almost the same as it was, nothing changed, only the ports moved around a bit so that it's Matrix 7 compatible. Yep, in, in the past we had the horizontal layout of ports for everything because Velocity 1 had its its inlet and outlet yeah. ports horizontal. Now all of the Momentum 2s, These Velocity 2s, two. switch to vertical where the outlet is at the top for the best bleeding. Yep. Uh, so those switched around too. Uh, we still have two positions of the inlet port for uh, the five slot configuration of the case and the top two are for the seven slot config. Radiator compatibility remained the same, that if you have a five slot case, you can run an S360, an S240, and an S360. It's huge. Which is just massive size. Yep. Uh, the, the XL now is updated for two P360s and an X360. I've had lots of questions around Facebook and uh, I've seen them here on YouTube about compatibility in the bottom of the XL if you have a vertical GPU bracket. So uh, you will notice the new uh, Evo version of our vertical bracket fits really nicely with Metric 7 and it puts a Vector 2 GPU in just the right place that the ports still align in pairs with the three pairs of the distribution plate. And depending on where you choose to put that, if you move it one slot up or one slot down, or you have a card that's uh, a reference card and it's one slot smaller. So depending on that position, we'll give you clearance at the bottom for a radiator. Uh, in our sample build, we said we only had space for an S, and that's because we put the widest GPU in the lower slot, so from two to eight, that left us room for an S, but you can put Three S's. You can put that in one to seven and then you have room for a P, or if you put uh, a reference card in the top slot, you have room for an X. An X. One more thing that changed from the first sample, we because we sampled the uh, XL distro for CS, but since then we have made small changes and these are these uh, brass nickel plated inserts, which are here for the radiators. And these are here because uh, you can either mount the radiator with a st standard male male uh, rotary extender, or you can just unscrew the uh, the extender, which is a small fitting in the end, and you can choose one of five uh, 
push-in fittings, which are available in all of the EK standard fi fi finishes, which is nickel black, nickel black, gold, and set in titanium, and just plug the uh, uh, push-in fitting right into this hole. I'm not going to force it because you have to lube it a bit. A bit of a coolant on the O-rings is uh, is uh, is is more than sufficient to to make it slide in. And this is for the bottom ports and the top ports. And the XL distro is supplied with a with, with, with a custom-made radiator rail, so yep. that you can slide the whole thing in because the factory rails don't support movement of the radiator. Yep. So on the XL, there are actually five pushing ports in total, but you would only ever use four of them. Uh, no, I correct myself. There are six, and in the uh, case you have three radiators you will use five of them if you have just two radiators you will use four um, the side radiator is optional so if you install that the one fitting closest to the distro pushes directly inside and then you can use either a new fitting which we'll show it to you very soon or two 90 degree fittings for the tube which goes back to the distro if you don't use a side radiator then you must add an extra 28 millimeter male female extender to the to, to the top up. rad to bring it down directly back into the reservoir instead of going into the little bypass route. Yep. So it's these two, right? Yep. Yep. And the Evo is exactly the same picture as you see on the XL. The only difference with the Evo is it doesn't have push-in fittings at the bottom. That's because there's not actually enough room in the case to Move to slide the radiator. So we we couldn't get it to slide in. Uh, you put the ports at the back end and run long tubes over yeah. the whole rad. Uh, also, fun fact that these little uh, extenders fittings are are the exact same size as the micro HDP pushing fitting, so that if you fancy, you can screw the fitting directly inside the uh, distro and just plug the, the tube straight into the fitting. The only limitation for this is that the micro HDP is only 12 mil millimeters so that you can only use thick uh, tin tubes. So it might look a bit wonky, but if you pr prefer 12 millimeter tubes, it's, it's gonna be your dish of choice. Um, Joe mentioned fitting that you will see soon and we will jump onto the fittings that we will see soon. These are mentioned in the press release. Let me just get this out of the way. We will be grabbing some GPU blocks as well. So, uh, new fittings, two of them, all available in the standard EK colors. Nickel black, nickel black, gold, satin, titanium. These are double rotary extenders. Yeah, so as you saw already, we introduced the offset 7 and the offset 14 fitting. Oh, sorry. Uh, and we were, we were able to make those uh, from one single piece. Let's do it like that. So this is the 14. No, this is 7. This, yep. is, this is 7 and the 14. And the, yeah, and the, and the body of those is actually made from one solid piece, which is kind of uh, bored out from the, from the inside. Uh, so that it, it can be one single part, which is really elegant and it, it allowed us to make them really low, really nice to install. But we saw building the first Matrix 7 systems that actually one of the most useful offsets would be a 21 millimeter fitting because that's the difference of one PCIe slot and yep. it's also the difference of the smallest and the biggest graphics card. So to go from a uh, reference. reference card to a Strix or a Trio or for the win is 21 millimeters. So we needed a bigger rotary fitting. And after spending a little time looking at the Torque Micros, we <laughs> arrived at this design and the combination of them is just perfect. So since we made them from two pieces, we also have a rotating element in the middle. And that means you can use them to offset two parallel tubes or to offset two tubes that are perpendicular to each other. So Instead of installing it at the distro plate end and then still needing a 90 degree fitting on the graphics card, you can combine those two together, install it on the GPU, and then angle it forwards to the distro. We are we're, we're missing the brass piece, but the brass piece is also available in the press release so that we would show how do the internals of this work. 
I think it's hiding on, uh, on the opposite corner of my desk. Uh, maybe the cameraman will draw it here. Yeah, it's there. Okay, uh, while we are at this, so just this piece rotates. So this piece rotates at 45. Thank you very much, cameraman. So here we have the brass piece, but uh, we will return to it later because we have this in focus. So it simply does this li little trick so that you can offset and and uh, and change the angle at the same time. So it has uh, tactile clicks at every 45 degree so that you know that you're at the right setting, but you can stop at any uh, desired angle if you want to do something crazy like Ben does. Go, <laughs> go sideways with your tubes. So this is the 21 millimeter and one more neat feature is the six millimeter Allen key at the, at the top, just like we have it for the uh, micro ones. So that if you have a tight space to install it, you can just go in with the Allen key from the, the top and just screw it on all the way with, without even needing to touch the uh, knurling at the bottom or uh, or turn the fitting itself. And there you have it. We have uh, 21 and 28 mil mil millimeters of offset. Now that we show that, we can show the internals of the fitting, how it's made. Uh, it looks something like this, so that you would have uh, two small springs and two small ball bearings stuck in one side of the fitting and then you have grooves on the other side of the fitting at every 45 degree to make these physical clicks and this is the uh, thing that gets installed and holds the main piece of the fitting. I hope they like it because I like it. Everyone like I mean Everyone's just clicking them in the yeah. office. <laughs> it, it's really an all-out war between the click of this and the replaceable covers on the vectors. Which one? These guys. These one. These one. While we are touching these blocks, uh, I guess we will jump on to the GPU blocks if no one has any questions about these fittings. They just want the fittings and the mouse mats. Okay. So I think they're going to come and take the mouse mats. Uh, they, they're they're gonna take the mouse mats. Okay, we will, we will make the mouse mats happen then. Soon, TM. Uh, I'm gonna pack these fittings away, and we will come come back to the uh, GPU box. Let me see if we are on, if we are on. Yep, yeah, we are we are on on schedule. Next one are the GPU blocks. Let me make some room, rum. Yep. So uh, I did already see some questions already about the 3090 Ti. Ti. If you ask, well, it's Ti now. I mean, it was Ti. Now it's I. I don't know. I don't know what it means, titanium or something else. For me, it's Ti. Yeah, it's Ti. And then, uh, for me, it was always Ti. Yeah. And, and then, I was actually discussing the Pascal generation cooler with Nvidia, uh, and underneath where where it's stamped with like GTX 1080 at the time, underneath there's like two trapezes together and they referred to that as the bow tie. Yeah. Uh, I never saw it until they said because it never fits that way in a case that it's hanging down but it kind of does have a tie. Maybe it's tie. Okay. So yeah, yeah 3090 TIs. 3090 TIs, this is the 3090 tie trio, this is the 3090 for the win tree tie this one is an active backplate version. Even though the 3090 Ti doesn't have chips on the backside, RAM chips on the backside, we still made an active backplate cooler because it does indeed show per performance improvements. They are small. It's 0 0.6 degrees on the core, right? Or something like that? 0 0.7, 0 0.6? Uh, yeah, around half a degree. Maybe a big half on the core and three, three. degrees on the VRAM. On, yeah. the, on the RAM, and on the we can side, assume yeah. that's very similar for the VRM as well, yeah. uh, since they also reject some heat through the board itself. And there's the there's the opening on the far end of the for the wind for the power connectors, because that's how the, the card is made. So we had to make a hole at the back of it. But uh, has anyone ordered any of the new vector uh, two blocks? Because you get a neat tool inside the package. It's a plastic. Uh, 
toolie which you can use to unscrew standoffs. Yep. And you can also use that stabby thing to unhook uh, cables from your GPU. So if someone hasn't figured that, that out, there's a, uh, so like this one here, let me get the cameraman. Cameraman, zoom on my finger. Like there. Oh, there you have it. So, so on the middle of this hole, you have a groove where you would push in the tool and and it would stop it from slipping left and right and you can perfectly unhook your uh, power supply cable clip with, with the tool and just pull out the cable so that you don't have to yep, there, be there, nervous. The, the cable sits quite deep inside so it conceals the whole connector and you just have clean sleeving coming out. Uh, a really nice touch on all the I, all the vector tools. I guess you, yeah, you, you, you can see the groove now. It's It's perfectly focus now so that li little small thing is for that back to the blocks themselves so for the 3090 we will only do uh, nickel plexi version we won't do acetal versions uh, we will do the founders as well the 3090 founders did the same design as it was now it looks even better than b before because the core moved a bit and now it's more centered uh, for the for the win we will of course have the non-active backplate version as well the strix block will be compatible with the tough tooth tough yeah because a, a tough is for the 3090 ti same an accord an accord strix yeah yeah it's an accord strix and it's going to be a chunky boy because the copper is yeah the, co the copper is huge because there's actually big. three rows of power stages on the tough and the strix board uh, we also have like a triple row active backplate as well, so the, the combination is gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare your forklifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it for the GPU blocks. Nothing else on the GPU blocks yet. Of course, when something new launches, we'll be there. But um, some, someone asked about a 3080 Ti tough. Um, yeah. That is covered with the 3080 tough block. Which yeah, okay. So uh, the, the Ti is. The 3080 12 gig, the 3080 10 gig, and the 3090, with exception of Founders Editions, are all covered by the same block from us in general. Uh, and that means you can buy the 90 active backplate and slap it on a 3080. Uh, but we, need, we have no way of knowing if people are doing that when they buy a 3080, or they're doing that only for 3090s, which is why we're kind of putting a few out there for the 3090 Ti. We'll see if people are really interested in that last half a degree or, or the visual of having the, sandwich. the backplate covered in RGB and coolant and all that good stuff. Uh, if they are, then you can expect active backplates to come back for the next generation of graphics cards. Um, I wanted to, to, to say something about GPU blocks. Oh yeah. What, what uh, Joe mentioned, check the configurator, and if the info is not there, ask our su su support, and they will double check and let you know what's the correct information about compatibility. My, my smart paper here says that, that we have a monoblock. Sadly, the monoblock is inside a build, but we have a monoblock coming for the Z690 Asus Maximus Extreme, right? We can grab the build. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. Sure, we have the build here. We are gonna slam it on the, the desk. It's a build which is uh, not yet finished by our colleague. He's doing some crazy loops. And uh, if you have heard about Shop the, the Loop, this is going to be in in the Shop the Loop uh, gallery, and you can get all these. I guess we have to put it like this so that. So there's the monoblock. It's for the uh, Maximus Extreme. Uh, oh, and also someone asked a, a distro plate for the torrent, and we kind of can confirm that, right? I don't know exactly how, but yes. Yeah. We are doing something. We made it. Yeah, we are doing something, so we will try to also put it in the shop. Back to this one. So, it's the monoblock, it's Matrix 7 compatible, and... This is a very nice example to show uh, Matrix 7 Foundation products. As you can see that the ports on the uh, GPU block and the 
and the monoblock perfectly align so he could have just made it from the block to the monoblock but he wanted to go crazy with the loop uh, so this is about matrix 7 and foundation parts that the ports on the mon monoblocks will always be in the same it's y right y axis i mean they remain the same in both y and x yeah the most of the time uh and we try to prefer to align them with one of the gpu ports so yep. if it's not possible on the left set of ports we'll move it to the right set yep. of ports occasionally we might need to move by 14 or 7 but until now we've managed it on a on a huge range of boards uh from the tiny little z690i block which is really barely bigger than a velocity yeah not finished yet not finished not just yet definitely not, not finished uh and then uh, also right up to the to the extremes the xy70 extreme z690 extreme and hopefully some new boards very soon okay. i'm gonna take this away uh and i have some coming soon dm stuff on the on the list here is it time is it time to bring a big thing back i just squashed my microphone oops yeah it's time to bring a uh, there you have it headphone users i apologize uh coming soon tm products um convection heat sinks have we showed the convection heat sinks we, we have right yeah we had them last time we had them last time the heat sinks are officially coming in a week or two or something like that uh the heat sinks are if someone from the the uh video crew has it on its hand show the picture if not uh, we will post it on so social media soon uh, that's coming soon in four versions uh black nickel satin titanium and gold the metal tubes are coming a bit delayed and the the tube cutter we will have a tech plate cooler the the old tech cooler will be in stock again back soon which, which is for z z490 and z590 and we will have a tech cooler for the z690 as well yep uh also coming soon I guess we will have other extreme cooling stuff for LGA 1700, but more on that, that later. Take notes. And uh, and we can skip back, actually, because I've skipped the case. Yeah. One one more coming soon yeah. is the 7-inch uh, screen, which will yeah. be called the Quantum Lumen yep. now. Uh, and we did listen in the last show and made a nickel version. Yep. We have it. looks fantastic. Uh, so I think they'll be along within two months. Only one problem with it, we made it a little bit expensive because we, we've overdone the aluminum frame. So let us know in the comments what would be an acceptable price for you for a HDMI U U U U universal external screen which has a resolution of uh, 124 uh, by 768 pixels. Yep, that's the one, yep. Uh, it's a uh, LCD, right? Yep. So let us know what would be an acceptable price for it with, with a very nice looking frame which can be mounted at uh, 120 millimeter fan hole patterns and it can be flipped around because it has multiple grooves to exit the cables and it comes with included cables for the hdmi and the usb power as well i think it all also comes with a with a cable so that you can power it from the internal usb header right yeah that's yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah so three cables uh <laughs> and also a nickel like you asked <laughs> yeah nickel so uh that's all of the coming soon tm stuff uh the limited edition case then yep 125 sold uh, -huh. <laughs> uh yeah so the case that has been shown at last cs whoops. Whoops, whoops uh is gonna actually come to life it's also been shown in the expo video Ooh, top 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 down not the best shot for this uh so is the we can finally talk about names so it's the torsion family of cases we will probably have two case product lines uh this is one of it 
uh, it's more of an open frame concept case, similar like the 909, but different in many other ways. Uh, since it was last shown at CES, it, it went on a diet to lose this much aluminum because it was a bit heavy. Uh, it's about three kilos of aluminum gone because if you mount the power supply at the back and the, the GPU also sits more at the back side, it was leaning more to the back. So that's the only change from that uh, period, and it's going to be actually launched. It's not more. It's 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 not anymore just a concept case. We will actually bring bring it to market. Yep, it's going to be silver and black. They all will all come with their own personal number, and that doesn't matter, irrespective if it's silver or black, there won't be two of the same number, so yep. uh, let's hope your lucky number comes in the right color and the right time for your order. Or you have to, your order. To, to, to just buy the color that you don't like with the number that you want. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or order as many as your number. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, <laughs> you, you, you can order them all and then sell them later. Back to the case, the whole case, every single piece of it is CNC machine. Nothing is, is press stamped, nothing is laser cut, nothing is water jet cut, every single piece, the back grill, do, do, do we have a separate back grill here? No. Uh, the back grill which holds the radiators, if you take a look at the uh, expo video, you will see many, many details here and as now here as well. All of the cables will be housed inside the uh, uh, main motherboard tray of the motherboard of the case. Uh, this is spec'd out for MDPC cables, right? Well, and I mean, th this is spec'd out for the exact spacing of the ATX pins. Yeah. So with that, you'll want a heavy gauge wire with big insulation and uh, a really nicely fitted plastic sleeve. Yeah. Uh, exactly right for for the mdpc and uh, 15 gauge wire uh, everything will come together perfectly parallel uh, it's it's not like some combs that spread the cables in between so they like bulge from the connector and not like other places where they would get pulled together uh, but everything sits completely parallel no space between the wire just like you saw in the keynote build it comes in exactly right um, this is probably the world's most sturdiest uh, GPU vertical hold, holder bracket. Uh, it's machined from 30 millimeter thick aluminum. I've, I've no idea how big that row part is, it's, but yeah, I think, I think it's at least 20, 28 thick throughout. And I also made it a bit wider just so that it sits flat with a vector two oh. block. We said that we will uh, get a small child and uh, and have it stand on this bracket just or, to show. Or a big child. Or, or a big child, yeah. <laughs> um, what else I wanted to say about the case? Uh, yeah, the, the, the cables. Some of you might not fancy doing your own cables, but uh, we will get in touch with the world's most famous sleevers that they are. We will have some scraps of these middle plate, plate which won't pass QC and we will send these plates to them so that they can build the cables for a specific customer to the perfect length. Uh, if you have some sleeving skills, bump into the comments or just uh, uh, tag your friends and let them know that there, there will be a opportunity it's going to be a worldwide worldwide collaboration so that everyone's happy. Dave's going to stand on the GPU bracket. He's not a small child. Well, I may. Well, Varun says he is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will let them argue. Uh, also, the 777 number is made up. We have, have, haven't did, did decided what's the... That's good though. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good, but maybe we can make make it eight eight eight. Who knows? Ah. Um, uh, what else? Uh, the distro plate at the front uh, joins with the radiators at the back, back with push-in fittings. The the exact same ones that we showed earlier. You can fit three 
360p radiators mm, that's more than in a, enough cooling power and uh, yeah I guess that's it uh, let us know if you would prefer to buy it assembled or did disassemble we still haven't fully decided yet if it's gonna come assembled or disassembled let, let us know what do you pre prefer and maybe we, we will be able to work in that uh, angle I would personally prefer it disassembled so that I can I can assemble it uh, did I have I for, 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 for forget something no one asked about the price good Christopher was close with the price times two yeah Oh, 1337 is a great number of cases to make as or, well. Or that. Can't yeah. argue with that. Yeah. But we, we need more than 420, so you can have 420. Yeah, okay. Someone needs to get it. Cool. Um, what's next on my list? Uh, radiators, right? Uh, some said that they can't find radiators in the shop. All of the radiators are in the shop. I'm going to just lay it down. All of the radiators are in the shop except the four all black versions which we said that we will do and we will do them. Uh, even the cross flow radiators are in the shop and the white ones as well. Not every one of them is on stock. We haven't really promoted the radiators at all because until we have a regular supply chain established for the radiators we didn't want to promote them and then run out of stock so that's why you haven't heard anything about the radiators yet but they're there they are real you can order them uh, this is a cross flow version here which means it it has eight ports it has 16 different ways of connecting it because you can use any of the ports from one side and any of the ports on on other side to make it work it will p perform slightly worse than, than a regular U-flow radiator. Uh, I said that we have white ones. The biggest one is the uh, 560, right? The biggest non-crossflow is the X560. Yeah. And the biggest crossflow we have for now is the P360. Yep. I think you'll have to type the password, Joe. Oh, no. <laughs> it's too slow. Um, the radiator works uh, with these replaceable plugs so that you will remove one from one side and then unscrew the actual port and just move it. Uh, it's very easy to disassemble the radiator if you want to paint it, if, if you want to be a mother and, and you're bored with the uh, white color or the black color. The white color has been actually matched to uh, the most popular cases on the market like the Lee and Lee per se so you won't have 17 shades of white in your build. Uh, the, perf the, the performance have been bumped up crazy on the S from the Coolstream series. Uh, the P has also gotten its uh, performance improvement. Yeah, and a, and a lot of people I saw early on asking about the performance increase of the X. Uh, the X was always one of the most efficient radiators yep. available. Uh, and the configuration that we took forwards for the for all three of them from, from the SP and X draws heavily from the original XE geometry. So uh, we don't have a gigantic improvement there. And uh, the X now more than ever to distinguish it from the P really relies on on high speed fans on massive airflow uh because we i mean we could have gone with a low fpi on the x in which case it really wouldn't have had chance to shine above the p so uh they actually have the same fpi uh and what you get on the x is all extra surface area but it's, it's not going to be effective unless you have cra events. crazy airflow yeah. so for for most normal users in you know, ambient settings that you're gaming, that you're using it every day and you don't treat it like a, a, an overclocking rig or a benchmarking tool. P is honestly the best all-round choice to go for. It still looks 
really nice and substantial and chunky in a build and uh, S makes sense for the low speed fan guys for the smaller cases uh, yep. but if you do want a bench if you do have push pull mal tamis then get the X <laughs> if you check reviews of the Coolstream XC even today they are the best performing radiators there so there wasn't much place to improve there um, also like Joe mentioned the uh, the best all all rounder is the P all of the P radiators are multiple radiators which means they have five ports actually four ports can that can be used for uh, for making your tube runs and you have a extra port on the other end of, uh, on, of the radiator where you can either bleed air or just install a drain valve. Um, the radiators are done and uh, I guess it's time that we uh, show the, the main course of this uh, live stream, right? Right? Possibly. I Possibly. just want to. I just want to shout out to the celebrities joining us. We have. Uh, oh, okay. We have Terence in the chat. We have Ben. Okay. Uh, Brayton. I'm sure I know that name from a long, long time ago. The poets. Yeah, Terence. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's Terence. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So sorry. Uh, what other great questions have we missed out? So we had very early. Any plans for new coolant colors? white plans the mouse mats i think we covered the mouse yeah. mats we we also want to have them we literally can't steal enough for the office and we have to go and take these back from people's desks every time we make a show <laughs> my little tubes braided soft tube braided soft tubes is actually on my agenda since a while and i'm gonna do my best to make it happen no promises, but I'm going to try to make it happen. New coolant colors, actually, no. Actually, we will kill some coolant colors, colors, and we will make a nice video about how to use the dye pack. Because the dye pack is actually any coolant color that you want. And the, the, the dye pack can be used on the clear coolant and the solid white coolant. So, which means if you want a clear coolant, you can make any color clear, clear coolant. If you want a solid coolant, you can make any color solid coolant. Uh, if you have color suggestions that, that you want us to make so that you have the perfect recipe, that you can let us know and we will try to uh, make that color and have the recipe for that color available. Uh, I guess we, we will also make it in such a way so that if you're buying the bundle of the dye kit and the coolant that you will get a small discount so that you're not overcharged just because you want your specific uh, color. And I think that that's something that's gonna happen in, in the, the near future that we will have this tutorial ready on our YouTube channel. So subscribe and uh, wait for it to happen. That's it. Um, let's let's do do the big boy then uh, if you've seen the press release there is a mystical photo there of something that haven't been discussed yet so let's go yeah, this is gonna need both of us let's go grab it I guess that that's uh, that oh, okay you got the mic side yeah, all right uh, okay uh-huh Not sure what that was. Not sure that was. I I hope we didn't upset anyone with that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not gonna talk a lot about this here. Because we're gonna talk a lot about this on a lot more shows that are yeah. coming. Uh, they will be known as the Quantum X series in which I will probably be hosting 
the show and I will hope to bring in the engineers from such special projects as this one. Uh, quite a different creation, completely outside of our standard portfolio and this is something that we'd like to give people the opportunity in very small numbers to own. If you're super interested, super enthusiastic about random things like we random are, thing, and yeah. this, this is really uh, not the first product because technically we put the very first Delta Tech under this classification of Quantum, Quantum X, X yeah. which again, it, it was an experimental, uh, interesting development that we weren't sure how people were gonna react, but we wanted to give people the opportunity to own it, to play with it, and very much the same thing. So if this looks appealing to you, uh, be sure to stick around on YouTube I'll be back, we'll be back, and we'll have a lot of fun stuff like this to show. As some would say, and on, and on that bombshell, uh, we will end this live stream today. Uh, if you have any questions, bump them into the, the chat and we will either ins answer them in the chat or just ask our support or ask us in the official EKWB fan group on Facebook. Uh, thanks for joining and... Uh, See you in Quantum X. See you soon. Bye-bye.